One of the points that needs to be emphasized during those dialogues is that just as there can be benefit from making a diagnosis, there can be harm by doing diagnostic testing, whether it's the test itself or whether it's the series of results that can ensue and, and all of the interventions that follow any of the given results that are sometimes expected, sometimes unexpected. And many of those uh, interventions can be harmful. A very uh, obvious example would be um, fever medicines for fever. People are um, petrified of fever. And we, we published some data a couple of years ago showing that in our system and in, in a Kaiser system nearby, about 90% of parents would give antipyretic medicine, fever medicine, to children who are comfortable but had a temperature of 38 degrees, or which is about 100.4. Yeah, 100.4. So low-grade fever, and, and even if it was 37.5, which is, you know, 99.6 or 99.8, um, still a, the majority of parents would still give fever medicines to a comfortable-appearing child. Um, and I think we uh, don't acknowledge that no drug is completely benign. And that's a little bit lost, I think. Um, it's certainly lost on families and even sometimes lost on, on some practitioners. Some things do make kids better, right? So, so we first need to acknowledge that obviously much of what we do in healthcare um, is beneficial to children. And, and I don't want to um, underemphasize the importance of access to care uh, because underuse is a problem as well. We know that. Um, but overuse hasn't gotten as much attention. And so I think um, taking the time to explain to families um, what the risks and benefits of any intervention might include is a necessary first step. And there's going to be the occasional family who keeps pushing and doesn't trust you or doesn't believe you and is going to want more. And that's a challenge. And um, I think um, it will continue to be a challenge. But the more we increase awareness through things like the Choosing Wisely campaign, uh, which encourages doctors and patients to really question the utility of certain tests or treatments, um, the more we increase awareness, uh, I, I, I hope at least that the less of a problem this will be. I think that you know, you'll find that the traditional Western culture sometimes is a little bit dismissive um, of those interventions. Um, I think that the concern is that just because it's natural doesn't always mean it's safe. Right? I mean, foxglove plant, which is how digitalis is made, is, an, is natural, right? Um, but it's, it's, it's life-threatening if you ingest it. So I think that that's um, one of the things that needs to be emphasized is that um, Again, no interventions are benign, whether it's homeopathic, whether it's driven by pharma. Um, it still is an intervention potentially with toxicity. So if an intervention is absolutely necessary, um, then you know, we give the best intervention possible. But in those areas of uncertainty, I think emphasizing this idea that we as physicians are obligated to do no harm, stepping back, watchful waiting, um, is probably the safest approach and it's also the highest value approach because it does not incur more costs in our already severely constrained healthcare system.